Hello everyone, I know it's been a while since I uploaded my last video, but I'm very happy to finally be able to announce that... I'm big! Yes, that's right, I, Mayron, have finally returned to YouTube, and hopefully for longer than last time. This is because I've finally been able to sort out my life and organise myself in order to free up some dedicated time for this new series that I'm very excited about, and you should be excited about it too. Wait, what? What do you mean you're not excited about it? Well, that doesn't matter too much because you're going to sit there and listen to me ramble on about absolutely nothing for the next 20 minutes. But in all seriousness, it should be very interesting. And hopefully you're going to stick with me and follow me as I create a brand new UI from scratch using all these techniques and showing you some new stuff and hopefully you learn something. So for a long time now, the common question I always get asked now and again is about how I made my user interface and the process behind it of how I developed it, as well as various add-ons that I have created. If you don't know my UI, it's called Mayron UI Gen 3, and I will very briefly show it to show you what you can expect to achieve at the end of this very long series I'm going to be making. Every single episode in this series, there's going to be a new topic, and this topic today is going to be all about user interface layouts in general, as well as discussing the theory behind them, and about different add-ons that you can use to make a good layout. In later episodes, I hope to talk about how to set up different add-ons, and comparisons between different types of add-ons, and then going on to the more heavy stuff, such as creating your own designs and importing artwork via Photoshop. And no, when I say this, I do not just mean limiting yourself to KG panels, if you know what that add-on actually is. And also, I will even be teaching you how to program in Lua code, which is what Blizzard uses for their add-ons. Okay, so that is my introduction done, and it is time now to talk about add-ons in general. So please, won't you join me as I take you to my hideout, where we can discuss matters in private. And don't worry, I know that sounds creepy, but I promise I will not harm or touch you, okay? Okay. All add-ons can be categorised into specific groups that control the main functions of a World of Warcraft UI. These add-on groups can be aimed at the following aspects. You have the action bars, cast bars, chat boxes, combat information such as text and damage meters, etc. And we also have buffs and debuffs to think about, data mods, unit frames including raid frames as well, mini maps, and tooltips. There are other miscellaneous add-ons that serve other things to improve the usability of a UI, such as Postal which helps you open up all of your mail with one click of a button for example. Inventory is another category, but it is not too important. Bag add-ons such as One Bag or Bagnon as two popular examples can make sorting out your inventory easier, and some people actually prefer this, as it has a better look to them. However, it is not a very important and necessary add-on category that needs much discussing. So when you install a bunch of add-ons such as these, you cannot simply just throw them all over the screen and expect them to be amazing and work perfectly, as these add-ons have their own default settings, and causes a whole mess of problems if you don't just set them up or know exactly what you're doing. You do not want to have to snap your neck to one side to try and interpret what the hell is actually going on and what you're actually looking at. People can really get carried away with having their UI show tons of tightly compact information all at once. In many cases, some users actually go to the extent of having two or more add-ons showing the exact same information which is a huge waste of space to on the screen, not to mention making the UI that much more confusing. One example which is bugs me slightly is when I see people who have a combat log running in combat that splits out redundant information at the speed of light that no one could possibly read and make sense of while in combat. If you are looking at information that is irrelevant for combat, then that is a complete distraction which causes your performance as a player to significantly decrease. One add-on that can handle combat logs better than the Blizzard default one is called uh, Eavesdrop, which only shows the key points such as how much incoming and outgoing damage and healing you endure. However, having this flicker with text in the corner of your screen also seems very unnecessary to me, unless you make a mod to hide it in combat. It is very useful, for example, if you just die and you don't know what actually killed you, then you can retrace your steps by looking in the combat log and seeing the last thing that affected you as a player, so then you know what actually hit you and what did damage, so the next time you do a raid encounter you won't screw up as badly. So, you might be asking yourself what is a good composition for UI elements on the screen? Now there's many popular trends to go with. Some people prefer having their unit frames in the centre of their screen. This is a good idea for majority of the time, but users may find that this looks slightly messy. 
it can depend how much value you personally have towards the design and the layout aspect of it. Some people prioritize performance over design any day, but other people want to have the best of both, which is like what I do. You must pinpoint out the main features that you find essential in a UI and prioritize them by their importance to you. You may think, well of course I need unit frames, so that should be high on the priority list. But there are many other things to consider, such as alert messages. However, many people overuse alert messages and add so many of them that it makes the key things that you wish to track not stand out as much. There are some good text add-ons, add-ons that display visual effects or spell icons and timer bars that can be used to notify you of this kind of information. That should be taken into consideration for layout composition as it takes up a significant amount of visual space on a screen. Try to normalize this data and simplify their looks as much as possible while still being very effective. This can be a hard challenge, but as long as you remember that this UI is supposed to be for you, that means that you only want things on a screen that you will find of use. Do not have a bunch of raid leader mods if you are not a raid leader, for example. It's kind of common sense. When I mentioned normalization earlier, I am referring to all redundant information and data, such as spam messages. One default spam message example from the Blizzard UI involves the um, also the error message that you get where it says ability is not ready yet. It's because you're spamming the same key waiting for it to come off cooldown and it says it every second. You can install a mod called Error Monster which I personally recommend and I use myself. This handles errors to only show them every so often you know rather than the five seconds like I said earlier. This is something quite important to remember actually. The more spam an add-on outputs the more likely you are to mentally block it out and ignore it completely. So when something actually important shows and you see it all the time anyway, you most likely are going to completely ignore it. For example, if you had uh, to track a really important cooldown and you have all of these other cooldowns being tracked in the same sort of area on the screen and um, it's saying like, oh, flame shots of cooldown for a shaman or, you know, shaman, which I call it. So if that's coming up all the time, you're going to be used to it being there and always block it out in your mind subconsciously thinking, oh, that's not important. I can just forget about that corner of the screen or whatever. But then something actually important comes along, like ascendance is off cooldown. You want to know that, but because you have it tracking with all this redundant information, you're probably just going to ignore it. Also, beginners using a combat text add-on usually always results in a real messy UI. It is not a very good combination. A beginner with a combat text add-on because basically what they usually do is just stick with the default combat text which is displayed by that add-on. Um, one example is an add-on called Parrot. And basically the default settings for Parrot is just a whole mess. It's just text flooding the screen all over the place. I'm thinking, oh, who on earth would use the default? So you have to spend a long time, you know, altering the settings, but beginners don't like to fiddle around with this so they don't know too much and they're not used to the add-on. So they just tend to leave it. And that's just a, such a messy UI and it splits out so much redundant information it's just unreal. People think that the default data fields and data output and input text is needed when majority of the time it's not. In my UI, I only show um, important things such as dispel, interrupt, and major class specific notifications, um, as well as my incoming damage, um, healing my character is taking, and my outgoing heals. I personally hate the way that Blizzard handles healing numbers that clutter the screen and completely flood all over your screen. So I have this add-on called Parrot to simplify this and place all of my outgoing heals in a neatly, you know, neat space on my screen, completely out of the way of my center of screen, which is my main focus point. Usually in most cases, I know I'm healing and I don't actually need to look at it, so I have it further away from the center, somewhere on the left. The default damage numbers that Blizzard provides, which it shows on top of your target's nameplate, which your character does, you know, damage to the target, seems fine to me, to be honest. I do not use a combat text field for this, as I actually think that creating one brings more mess to the screen than the actual default. Some people like to see what type of damage they are doing, whether that is fire damage, frost damage, nature, you know, etc, etc. But for me, while in combat, this is something that is not going to have any effect on my performance whatsoever. Also, in terms of the UI, I want to put part of my concentration mainly on the target's health and my cooldowns to know which abilities I have available. Anything else is usually a distraction. As I said earlier, you should prioritize your UI elements. Another technique people can sometimes use is to alter the default position of the minimap and chat boxes. 
Uh, one popular method I remember is to place the abilities on your action bars higher than normal and place the chat box underneath or fit the minimap somewhere in the center with the action bars on the left and right hand side of the minimap somewhere below the bottom of the screen. Some people may find that having a minimap close to them is very useful but some parts of the game may benefit more than others by this. It is useful for healers, for example, in a PvE raid boss fight to know where your target is and whether you should move to be in range of that player that you are attempting to heal. A quick glance of the minimap can help identify the person's position, but majority of the time I find that I do not use it that much, so I stick the minimap in the corner like it usually is with the default Blizzard UI. I just choose a very nice spot to record my video and then some other guy has to steal my spot. But um, yeah, anyway, this is Mayron UI, and I'm going to show you some key features, which is really good in the UI, which should hopefully make you excited for the things to come, because I'm hoping in this series to include as much stuff as possible in terms of how I made my UI and how you can make a UI similar to this. So one of the really nice features that I'm going to have to show you is that you can actually hold down Control and Alt to get a whole new panel that displays, which is called the Expand button, and you'll see that it plays a very nice effect, so here I go. You hold Control and Alt and you see this uh, expand button that shows up and if you click on that this is going to be really good it actually moves the entire panels up and moves all the UI elements as well as uncovering by fading in a whole new row of action bars now this uh, row of action bars is actually built up from two action bars in Blizzard to make 20 and then you can just release the Control and Alt key in order to hide the button once more so as you can see here, it actually changed the text to retract, so then you can just press that and it all retracts just like that. There's also a similar thing on the right hand side with the action bars on the side. So you can press the expand sort of key and then retract and retract again. So that's quite a nice touch. And you also have the uh, chat window here. And these are all things I made in Photoshop and imported and actually coded and programmed into my own add-on called Mayron UI Core. It's the core add-on in the UI pack which is on WoW interface, but you can actually update the core add-on on Curse Client. Now the, the benefit of not using KG panels is that it makes the UI very much more lightweight, as it doesn't have any in-game settings, however I'm going to show you as probably the last thing on my list, you know in this series, is that how to actually make in-game Blizzard options. You can type full slash MUI and press enter, and you can see here you've got a few options which I've put into the game, and type MUI config and you actually get this very nice window up, which looks exactly like the Blizzard options but you know because so you're basically just using the Blizzard art itself like the you know frames and such and such so you have a ton of options here you can actually alter the expand and retract button with uh, what modifier keys you actually want to hold down by default it's on control but I've altered mine to control and alt and then you have a whole bunch of things here but one nice touch is that the panel configuration menu actually lets you alter and rescale some of the panels so um, you have the action bars for instance we can alter the width and the height and as you see there everything's getting completely messed up but it's just an example and then obviously you're using this thing called ace you know wow ace which it comes with the whole uh, what's it profiles functions and profile package so you can actually have profiles for your add-on and uh, this, the you know, D button on the chat box, which I failed to mention, is it actually changes the mode. So we've got the healer layout enabled, and you can click it again, you go straight back to DPS and tank layout. And it alters many things, such as the raid frames and other smaller things, which I can't really show you unless I was in a proper raid environment or something, you know. You also have these buttons here, you know, chat, spell, book, talents, which opens up a whole load of menus. And you can hold control to alter these to dungeon journal, quest log, achievements, and then shift will do it again so you have looking for group, mounts and pets, and the PvP window. Okay, so I think I'm nearly finished showing you the UI. The other thing is that I have created the minimap add-on, but more importantly is that I've created this amazing thing, it's a setup add-on, and a lot of people have been bugging me, saying how the hell do you create such an add-on? And I put a lot of work into the aesthetics, so, you know, I spent a lot of time photoshopping, and I want to show you that just now. So you can type MUI install, oh that's all in caps but that doesn't matter, and then you'll see this very nice window just fades in with this animation, and you can press like the, you know, previous and next to go through the tooltip, uh, not tooltips, the tips about the UI, and then you have the install button which comes up with this, and you've got confirm, you know, choose another resolution, stuff like that, and that's how you install the UI. And the last thing is the MUI bonus, 
which is just some very nice bonus features that control major functions in the UI. So by the end of this series you should be able to do some stuff like this which you know sounds impossible but I'm sure I can teach you with confidence some really cool stuff. So hopefully you stick around for the rest of this series and I'll talk to with you the rest of episode 1. Action bar mods bring more to the table as they have more depth in terms of UI planning and composition. Add-ons such as Bartender or Dominoes are two of the most popular add-ons for handling action bars, but however they are larger in memory. There are other alternatives if this is an issue for you, you know, for people who have a bad PC or they can't really run that much stuff, as this adds to loading times trying to get into the World of Warcraft client. Many lesser known add-ons can be more beneficial for you if this is the case, because they only perform the essential tasks and remove a lot of the bulk from the memory usage. Personally, I find that Bartender is to be the best add-on to handle action bars. I have tried Dominoes, and for add-on scripting using Lua programming language, uh, Bartender is by far the most user-friendly, and I will go into more depth about this later on in future videos. Bartender, like most other action bar mods, allows you to add more bars and, you know, more action bars and reposition and rescale them. They also come with a load of other different options like, uh, you know, visibility options and when to show them. There, there are tons of options and they're all very, very good. A strong technique is to have a larger scale action bar containing the most important abilities that you're going to be using, you know, like your major cooldowns. And this is used in order to single them out from the less needed abilities. Uh, one thing that I do personally is something where you can actually hide action bars while it is still you know, enabled. This allows you to press keys to use the abilities but the ability itself is not actually visible on the screen. This is a fantastic method as it comes into play later on in this series. But basically you can create a lure script to create some sort of button uh, which allows you to show and hide action bars for quick access in order to show to hidden bars like my UI as you saw earlier. You can even add interesting animation effects to them, you know, for fun. So you can have them fade in and out and all sorts of things, uh, motion animations and such and such. So, for abilities that have no cooldown and you can use whenever, as long as you remember the key binding, you can have them hidden and just, you know, click that key to use it, but it doesn't actually take up any space on the screen. I have to admit, it does take a while to get used to this sort of method of gameplay, but once you play on for your character for a while, uh, then it works very, very well. Now that I have pointed out the key things to take into consideration to do with the composition, we can now actually start talking about the add-ons to use. Once we have picked out the add-ons that we want to use and download them and install them, which I'm going to show you how to do, then I'll show you how to best set them up and start building the UI. This is probably a good endpoint for the episode 1. However, if you want to continue with this series, then I recommend subscribing only to be notified of the new episodes available. You don't have to if you don't want to, but, you know, it's always a plus for me. Um, so anyway, I'm off to cook Chris- I mean, uh, food. So, uh, yeah. Um, thanks for watching, and until next time, bye for now.